the purpose of this talk is to discuss what it's like working for a DAO and how to do it in a kind of practical sense, right? Truly believe that the future of work is DAO, that in the future, you know, commensurate with a lot of other trends we're seeing towards freelancers and independent work, more and more people are going to start working for DAOs and switch from being an employee to a contributor to multiple organizations, multiple DAOs in the future. Why do this? Why are DAOs taking off? Again, I think it's a culmination of trends. One, you don't, when you work for a DAO or you contribute to a DAO, you're not an employee. You're usually also a stakeholder and owner. This represents a new form of economics that has generally been introduced by Web3. Two, and I think this is probably the most important one, is community. You know, no more working with unaligned people, kind of just doing something that you hate every day to earn a nine to five paycheck, right? You can work with people that you want to work with on projects that you enjoy. And then the final piece is independence, right? Most DAOs are fully remote, they're ephemeral internet organizations to begin with, so they don't care whether you're working from Denver, Colorado, or Singapore, or the mountains of Canada. And that's really powerful for individuals. So one thing that is a little bit worrying or I think gives a lot of people pause is like, oh, this sounds a lot like the gig economy, which turned out to be highly extractive, right? Like Uber, Lyft, Grubhub, they were going to introduce this new economy where everybody was a freelancer, you just like earn some extra you know, cash on the side driving Uber, earn some other cash doing Grubhub, you know, creating economic opportunity for everyone, except it created economic opportunity for the VCs that invested in those companies, maybe for some early employees, but most people are worse off with the gig economy than they were from before because it took away a lot of the stability and a lot of the kind of like benefits and certainty that regular employment faced or provided. And that's why I think DAOs are important because they give contributors ownership, right? There's this triangle of value that's passed between the contributors who are working on the DAO on a day-to-day -day basis, the people that might provide funding for the DAO to operate, and even the users of the product the DAO kind of develops or puts out into the world. And we see that through the distribution of tokens most often, but it's a sign of a really kind of new trend in economics that I think point towards a more stakeholder-based economy rather than capitalism or communism or any kind of existing dichotomy. So I think, again, the other, and maybe the first kind of big benefit of working for a DAO is you find your people, right? There is probably a DAO for something that you care about or are interested in. Up here, three quick examples, MetaCartel, the airport to Web3, what they're really doing is supporting early stage projects in the space, MetaGamma Delta, supporting women in the space and bringing more women in, and then LexDAO, decentralized legal engineering, creating products like CaliDAO for people to use and earn revenue off of. You know, and these are just kind of three of the tons and tons of DAOs that are out there that have people that contribute to them actively that earn money from contributing to these DAOs. You know, and that means you get to make your own schedule. You also aren't owned by an employer. When you're a DAO contributor, there's no like piece of paper you sign that says, hey, you're gonna dedicate nine to five every day, we're gonna own everything you do, and you can't work for these other people, right? You own your time, DAOs don't have employees, or they shouldn't, they should have contributors, and they should provide the flexibility to work full or part-time. Some of that's like what DAOs you wanna work for, but most DAOs that I know from DAO House to MetaCartel Ventures, to Raid Guild really provide for that full suite of optionality around how much work do you want to do? How much do you want this to be your full-time gig? So what's the best way to work for DAOs in a really kind of like blocking and tackling way? Well, first, 
you should find some DAOs that you want to work for, start contributing, you know, get into their Discord, raise your hand. A lot of joining a DAO and starting to work in the DAO ecosystem is just being proactive about, I have these skills, I want to do this work, what's the need of this organization? You're working on something cool, I dig it. Can you pay me to actually produce value for this community? That's step number one, but then there's kind of like all the, oh shit, now I work for an ephemeral internet organization that may or may not pay me in stable coins or might just pay me in their local currency. Like, what do I do? How do I you know, manage my employment when we're really working in this new ecosystem, this completely new thing that is semi-disconnected from the real world? And that's where I think the best way to be a DAO contributor is to create your own little LLC, your own little business, so that you know, you're not just Bill working for DAOs, but you're Bill Co working for DAOs. And this gives you several advantages from tax advantages to also protection against liability because a lot of DAOs are ephemeral internet organizations you don't want somebody to do the internet version of a slip and fall and then try and pick on the richest contributor to get paid back. You want to protect yourself and it, it's really up to you to protect yourself. This structure also allows you to bundle incomes from multiple DAOs, right, through the same entity, through the same business so that it's not like having to report eight different streams of income on your personal tax return. Taxes suck, like make life easier for you if you can. You know, I, I think like right now there's a lot of conversation about whether DAOs should be C corps, what entity form DAOs should be, and my personal opinion, this is not legal advice. I used to be a lawyer. I gave that up because being a lawyer sucks. You know, it, the entity choice depends on the DAO. The most important thing is choosing an entity that allows you to maintain your ethos. So, Opolis. Uh, SportDAO are all Colorado cooperatives. It means that the people that join the cooperative are the owner. It means when there's excess revenue or profits, those profits can be distributed back to the owners who are the people that use and participate in that ecosystem, right? It's, it's got an entity, but it's a very values aligned entity. If you're like a small investment club DAO, do an LLC, whatever. You know, if you're just like uh, hacking on a project here at Denver and you're trying to think like, how do I make this my real full-time thing? Depending on like the project where you live, maybe you just like keep it ephemeral. Maybe you don't choose an entity because we are trying to work in this new space that doesn't fit neatly into the entities that we've designed in different states so that, you know, the web two world can try and understand what the DAO world's all about. But I think the important things is that DAOs shouldn't be C-Corps because that usually means that the value created by the DAO can only be distributed to the C-Corp shareholders, which are usually VCs and a small founder team. That ruins the ethos. DAOs shouldn't try and provide their own HR services uh, because that's expensive and complicated and distracts from the mission of the DAO. And they should really kind of try to balance this freedom and flexibility concept of we want contributors, we want people to be able to move in and out, we don't want to kind of like calcify the way we work with people and the way that work, DAO work works, but also provide a way to protect their contributors, give them access to benefits, to living wages, so that they can contribute full time to DAOs and not be, you know, part of this extractive Web2 economy anymore. So this is my like shilling point for Opolis, is that what we are is an employment DAO essentially. Like LexDAO provides legal engineering services to other DAOs, we provide employment services and HR services to individuals that work for DAOs. Mostly freelancers, independent workers as we call them, but we essentially allow you to wrap yourself in the entity, right, and you get paid by the DAO from the DAO to your entity, and then we take out all the payroll taxes, we elect, let you elect benefits, all of that, 
so that you really have the benefits of working for what a big company would look like in the sense that you sign up, you choose your health plan, you set your kind of like salary, you get a W-2 at the end of the year, all of that good stuff, but you still, you own your employment. You're, you're not tied to any one DAO, to any one project. You can take your entity with you from project to project. You don't have to change healthcare every time you change jobs. And most importantly, you're joining a community. You're a part of a DAO itself, and the more people that join, that means better rates for healthcare, that means more value distributed to the members, so that we can also participate in this kind of circular stakeholder economy. And we make sure the government gets their piece so they don't come after you. So again, here's my quick summary on like steps to work for DAOs. These are slightly biased because I work for Opolis. But find the DAO or DAOs that excite you. Start contributing and then ask to get paid. Consider joining Opolis for payroll and benefits if you go full time in Web3 or are a Web2 freelancer that appreciates this kind of like benevolent ownership economy. And in any case, make sure you're protected from liability. So wrap yourself in some sort of entity. We help with that if you join Opolis. But if you don't join Opolis, still please do it. It's not that expensive. It'll save you a lot of heartache and headache. And then finally, just like work hard and create value for the projects that matter to you. Uh, that's, that's what Web3 is about. It's about producing things of value that can be shared across people in new and special ways that aren't extractive. You know, it, it's about taking the green pill and being part of this regenerative economy. So, my name's Bill Warren. I help with product at Opolis. I also contribute to Dow House. So I'm a like prototypical example of somebody that contributes to multiple Dows and works full time in the space. And I've been doing it for three years. I love it. You know, if you want to work for a Dow, I'm happy to help get you started. And also, if you work for Dow's full time, please consider Opolis because we. Our goal is to make life easier for you and also create a community of other freelancers who are similarly working primarily in the Web3 space.